Today is paint day and I'm gonna be painting my YouTube office. I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm also excited to announce that InnoCraft is sponsoring this video by sending me this airless paint sprayer, the Max Spray M3 Plus. This is an airless paint sprayer that's supposed to be comparable to the Graco Magnum X7. Um, I'm gonna be putting it through some usage using at least nine gallons of paint. Uh, some come out of a five gallon bucket and several come out of single gallon buckets. And I'll get it cleaned up and I'll give you my final assessment of what I think about this. But first, let's get this out of the box and show you what's inside. And straight out of the box, this is about 90% assembled for you. The first thing you wanna do is assemble your cart. You'll just put the handle up. They provide you with a bolt, a spacer, and a wing nut. And you'll just take your spacer, put it up, insert the bolt from the backside, line the hole, and tighten it down. It's pretty simple. This does feel like a professional grade paint sprayer. Um, this is comparable to the Graco Magnum X7 that retails for $623.40. And this one retails for $399.00. But with the link that I'm gonna leave in the description below, you can get a significant discount off of that, putting you in the price range of the Graco Magnum Project Painter Plus. So it's already putting you at a really good value because this is a superior paint sprayer to that smaller Graco model, which I actually own. Um, I've owned a lot of paint sprayers and I'm excited to actually test this one out and see exactly how well it does perform. Now let's take a quick look and see what's actually included with the paint sprayer. And if you're doing a comparison with other paint sprayers, be sure to keep in mind that you're getting some accessories like the 18 inch uh, extension, and then you're getting 50 foot of actual hose, 225 foot hoses, and the spray tip that comes with this one is a 515, which is a common spray tip on these airless paint sprayers. And even if you've never owned a paint sprayer before, the instructions that come with this one are very easy to understand, so you won't have any problem operating it. And because you have that 515 tip, it's actually gonna help you achieve pro grade quality spray with minimum overspray. But don't forget to read the label on the material that you're gonna be spraying. It'll tell you exactly what size tips are approved and the actual amount of pressure that it should be sprayed at. And four items you might find helpful is this is a three quarter horsepower motor operating at 551 watts and it can spray 0.33 gallons per minute at 3000 PSI. And before I get any paint running through this, I wanna show you this end that they've put on here. To clean it up, you just take the filter off and you add a water hose to this and it's supposed to make cleanup a lot simpler. I'm actually looking forward to cleaning a paint sprayer and I've never said that before because I wanna see how well that actually works. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on in the video, but I thought that was pretty cool that they added that feature. I'm gonna go get my work clothes on, mask off this room, and then I'll demonstrate exactly how this works. As I mentioned a little earlier in the video, be sure to read the label. And I really like the label on this paint because it's really easy to read. You got a dry time of 30 to 60 minutes, a recoat time of two to four hours, coverage and your cleanup. And when you come down here and take a look at the label for spraying it, you got the tip size is 0.015 to 0.021 with a pressure range of 1500 to 2000 PSI. Over here on the bare paint, it's a little different. Doesn't have real clear instructions here, but it all is included here. And for spraying the bare paint, you need tip size of 0.15 to 0.21 and a mesh filter of 60. And before you start any paint project, be sure to go out and grab your paint suit, some gloves and some goggles. And don't forget to get your paint strainers and an additional bucket to strain that paint. Because when you go to put this paint through a sprayer, it has particles at the bottom of that can that may get clogged up in the sprayer and it's just best to spend the two dollars on the strainers and strain that before you get going that way you have no problems during your project and the way that i take the strainer out of that bucket 
and put it in this bucket. It simply just grab it, squeeze it right out. You're gonna waste your gloves, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. So just lift it. It's about to get a little messy right here. But being that you got gloves, it's not gonna be too bad. All right. Take your glove, fold it over like this, and then fold this one over like that and toss those gloves. And I wanna share with you what was in that paint because look at that big clod of paint and all these particles. If we wouldn't have strained that, we would have definitely had a problem during spraying. To seal this up. And then I'm gonna take the lid off and that's where we're gonna stick the hose to actually pull the paint from. That way the paint doesn't start to dry while we're preparing our paint sprayer. And to prepare the paint sprayer, just take off the cap, grab the two wrenches that are included, tighten down the actual spray gun, then remove the straps off the hose, then attach the hose and tighten it down. And it's basically that simple to set up this paint sprayer. And right here we have a bucket hanger. So you just take your bucket, put it right there. It helps hold it in spot when you need to move your paint sprayer. Just insert it down to the paint itself, into the bucket. Some people might prefer to turn your bucket this way. And one other item that I'm gonna to use today because I'm working with high ceilings is the extension wand. This makes my job a little bit easier. And that's one of the reasons I really like this because it's a package deal and you get that extra extension wand and all these additional accessories. And the first thing we need to do is get this primed. And how we're gonna do that is turn this down to where it says prime. We're gonna look over on this side and then there's a little button that's under the bottom that you need to push start valve before prime. And you can just grab it and press it like that. Now we'll turn on the unit, press that button. You can see it coming up through the hose. Now I wanna switch it over. You can hear the pressure coming in. And it's primed. This is my test subject. Always have a test subject where you're gonna start spraying. Here is okay with me. All right. Now what you see here is that it doesn't have enough pressure. That's a pretty good spray pattern for me. We're not near high. I mean, it looks like we still got a lot of pressure to go. And for me, that's a pretty good spray pattern. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Let's start to paint. And something I noticed right away is that sprayer is a lot quieter than the other sprayers I've owned. Do not forget your respirator. I did not mention that earlier because I thought it was a given, but I figured I better bring it up because you definitely need a respirator. Number one. We're ready. I had a leak in my gun because I didn't tighten it down well. That's all I need. My bad. <laughs>
Now to get this cleaned up, you wanna bring this out of your paint, which is hard to see because this is black, but bring your hose out of the paint itself and turn this to prime and then it'll start draining back into the bucket. Once that's complete, I'm gonna take it over to the water hose and get this cleaned up. And this is where the quick cleanup is supposed to come in. So let's take this off. I don't mind getting a little bit of paint on my hands. We'll add this to the end of this hose. We'll close it off. Then we'll get it tightened down, turn this on, and let it flush out. But be careful to not stand in front of this hose when you turn it on because you'll get paint all over you. <laughs> And I must admit, that does clean up a ton faster than any traditional paint sprayer I've ever used. And you know you're clean when you're spraying clean water. Although we still got a little bit more work to do in here, we got to epoxy the floors and things like that. I was actually pleasantly surprised on how well that paint sprayer was. I would actually put this up against any paint sprayer in the market at this price range because we're talking, it comes with accessories and you're below $400 at the retail value. With that link that I'm gonna leave in the description below, you'll even save a lot more. And I don't think there's gonna be a paint sprayer on the market that can actually give you the quality that this one does and the accessory that this one does at the price this is. So if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. I hope to see you in my next project.